We had a brief discussion about um, is pathfinding and networks, right? Yeah, it's, it's about, about finding groups through networks. In your previous video, Mike Pound talked about the Dijkstra algorithm, and that's one way of finding your route through the network. It's what we call a link state algorithm. Uh, so today I'd like to talk about a different way of doing that, uh, the Bowman Ford a distance vector algorithm. And it's just a different way of achieving the same thing. We're trying to find our way through a network. It's, I guess, a gossipy algorithm. So let's imagine all of our routers are named after colours and what they want to do, they want to inform the other routers of their, their distance that they have to travel to get to the other routers. So let's imagine I'm the black router. I'm going to give my routing table to all my neighbours. So let's imagine I'm going to shout out some of my routes to my neighbours. So I go, hey, green router, I can get to the blue router in one. Hey, blue router, I can get to the green router in one. Dijkstra, imagine it like this. The routers are trying to build up a picture in their head. Each router is trying to build up a complete map of the network. So the routers are sending each other. It's a link state algorithm. They send each other. Oh, I've got a link from the black router to the red router. It costs three. Add that to your map. The Bellman Ford algorithm works differently. It's, it's a distant vector algorithm. So each router is telling the other routers, I can get to black in a cost of one. The green router will receive that information and go, oh, thank you, blue router. So it's passing around what we call its routing table, the distance it takes to get to all the other routers. So let's turn to the old school uh, overhead projector here, if you like. Let me get this lined up. We've got our, our lovely line printer paper here. Let's have some routers. So let's have a black, green, blue, and our red router. And let's assume there's a certain cost of travel for each of these paths. Red links to black, got a cost of one. Red links to blue, got a cost of three. Black links to green, cost of one. Black links to blue, got a cost of three. Blue links to black, got a cost of one. There's our routing network that we're going to work with. Pretty simple. But the routers need to find their way through it. Let's imagine we switch on red and the blue first. So we've just switched on the red router, we've just switched on the blue router, and they can see each other and they know that the cost between them is three. So these blocks represent the distance, if you like, it's gonna take that router to get to that other router. So red can see blue in a cost of three. Blue can see red in a cost of three. So these blocks are the routing table. Now let's imagine we're gonna switch on black for the first time. So black, when we switch it on, can see Red, cost of one, blue, cost of one, and nothing else because we haven't yet switched on green. So now when black is switched on, blue can see black, red can see black, so they've been added in to the routing tables. Now we're going to switch on green. So if we switch on green, green can see its neighbours. So green can see blue in a cost of three, green can see black in a cost of one, but also blue, you can see green at a cost of three, and black, you can see green in a cost of one. Let me check I've got this right. But if we've got this all right, then green can see its two neighbors, red can see its two neighbors, blue can see its three neighbors, black can see its three neighbors. Now the routers are going to exchange their routing tables. So let's take the black router and imagine it's going to send out its routing tables to its neighbours. So it's going to shout and it's going to say, hey, red, I can get to red in one, blue in one, green in one. What are you going to make of that? So when red sees that, red hears for the first time about green. Red didn't previously know about green. So red can now go, I can get to green in the one cost you told me plus the one cost it takes me to get to you. So I've got a new route to green. Red can also say, oh, you can get to blue in just one? Brilliant, because if I add on the one it takes me to get to you, now I've got a route to blue in two. That routing table is going to arrive with green. Green's going to say, oh, you can get to blue in one? Brilliant, I've got a cheaper cost to blue. It's gonna hear for the first time about red. 
I can get to red now in a cost of two. That's brilliant. Okay. And then when blue, here's about the same routing table. Blue has also got cheaper paths. Now, I think you or I can see, looking at that, that we've now got the cheapest cost path for everything. The routers aren't so clever, so what they need to, well, they haven't got the global view of the network. So what they need to do again, so let's imagine now we're red, we've received that and we've updated our routing table. We've made changes. Whenever we make changes, we send on our routing table. So now red is going to send its routing table on to blue. Red sends that table to blue and blue learns that red has a cost of black and one. That's no use to it. It's already got a one cost path. Got a cost to get, uh, path to green in two. That's no use to it. It would add on this three. So blue is not going to update its routing table as a result. If blue doesn't update its routing table, it's not going to send anything on. And that's the essence really of the, the Bowman Ford distance vector algorithm. My guess here is the trick's going to be in configuring this, right? In setting those numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, well, there are issues with this. Yeah, there are tricks and little hacks you have to make. What, there's some things we haven't talked about. So, how often does it send those? What happens when things go wrong? Um, so, for example, one of the great things about Bowman Ford is if there's good news, if a, uh, a new computer comes on, that spreads through the network pretty quickly. If a new route came and we saw that news spreads quickly. There's an issue which I don't, I don't think we can quite cover in this video, where if a link dies, bad news spreads very slowly because a red router might think it's still got a route to black. The black router might still think it's got a route to red. And they're exchanging with each other that they've still got that route, even once that route has disappeared. Uh, it's called the count to infinity problem. There's various hacks to get around that, but with a distance vector algorithm, there's no, no real satisfactory solution. Is this something that's used on... Um, is this... I love your mug, by the way. Show us your mug. There we go. Look, uh, the themed mug. <laughs> it's always computer file. We'll have to get some of those made. Is this used then? Is this used extensively now? Absolutely, yes. This is, this is used very extensively. So... The, uh, uh, this was used in RIP, Routing Information Protocol, the, the daddy of them all, they are one of the oldest routing protocols we have. Um, IGRP, Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, uh, used this, and then when that became Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, they they hacked it a little bit, and they added in a little bit of link stay. But the way, it, the way it's really used, and perhaps we don't have time to get into this, you've got an excellent video by Tim Griffin, Border Gateway Protocol uses an extension of distance vector. It uses what we call path vector, where instead of just sending, I am the black router, here's my router table, and you've got costs of this, it sends the entire path. And that gets around this whole um, problem with bad news spreading slowly. And that, that, that variant on distance vector routing, that variant on, on Bellman Ford, that's how the big scale routing of the internet works today. Where did Bellman Ford come from? Is it is it a recent thing? No, no, no. This this algorithm dates way back to the fifties, and actually, it wasn't even Bellman and Ford who discovered it. Uh, I can't remember the names of the original discoverers, but uh, Bellman and Ford weren't the uh, original originators of this algorithm. They just uh, popularised it, did they? Yeah, exactly, exactly. They're, they're lucky to get the credit. Well, Ford did a lot of the uh, old algorithms for networks, so there's a lot of algorithms named for Ford. Right. So we're here. We can't go to S, we can only go to L. That's a nice easy one, so I need to find L. So L goes to C, and it's three plus two is five. So L comes in just underneath One column to start with. And each of these nodes within the network has connections to other nodes. This is how you initialize the network.